Welcome to The Warp, I'm Jack Rita, and in this video I'm going to be talking about Ultra Rewards. Now, rewards are from a deck that has art that's different from the Cosmic deck. So this is what a reward card looks like, and the Cosmic deck has this art on the back. Um, and the reward deck is something that you can't always access. It's not part of your starting hand of cards. Only effects that give you rewards will let you get access to the reward deck. Now, that's usually by allying with the defense and winning the encounter. So defensive allies can get rewards um, and they can draw from the reward deck or from the cosmic deck or they can free their ships. Those are the three different ways that you can break down how you're going to claim your rewards. Uh, and you announce what you're going to do, and you can do a mix and match. So if you have allied with four ships on the defense and your side wins, you are due four rewards. And you can say, I'm going to use two of those to get two of my ships out of the warp. And then I'll use one to get a card from the top of the cosmic deck, and I'll use the other one to get a card from the reward deck. Or you can just, which what most people do is just say, I'm going to get four cards from the reward deck. Because the cards in the reward deck are usually pretty good. There aren't that many cards in the reward deck that are not that good. And in some cases, it's a subjective opinion. So there are, for instance, in the Cosmic Incursion reward deck, a couple of negative cards, uh, negative attack cards, that most players are not going to want to have. But uh, depending on your alien power, maybe you do want those. So like I said, it's not always uh, bad things. Usually there are some special cards that are not part of the cosmic deck like kickers uh, some special artifacts that you can find there uh, what you won't find is any flares the flares are only going to be in the cosmic deck so that's reward deck generally now we've got a small selection of ultra rewards which as you can see they also have a different back and the different back is important because when you are taking compensation from somebody they're taking cards at random but they can target the reward deck cards so Random just means they're not seeing the face of the cards. Um, and there are a couple of cards in the reward deck that act as booby traps so that when someone does take those cards, they target them for compensation and they take them, they have a negative effect. And that is true with the ultra reward deck as well, as you will soon see. So people know when you've got the ultra rewards, they'll know how many that you have. Um, but like I said, it's not as easy to get them. So if, for example, you are due four rewards and you're taking them from the reward deck, these ultra rewards are going to be shuffled in. And while you're drawing, you're going to say, all right, yeah, I want four, court, four cards from the reward deck. And I've, I'm taking one. I'm like, oh, the next one is an ultra reward. Well, I'll take that. But then if another one is on there, you cannot draw that card. So you can only earn one ultra reward in a batch of rewards. So you would have to draw from the cosmic deck or take one of your ships out of the warp uh, if possible. Um, so a little bit of a restriction, but let's say that I'm holding two ultra rewards in my hand and a, and a cosmic deck and you're due two cards in compensation. You can take both of my ultra rewards. So that's only by earning them as rewards that you are limited to getting one uh, in a particular batch. So let's now take a look at what is in the Ultra Reward deck. All right, we're going to start off with the encounter cards. There's a couple of encounter cards that are in here, um, four of them to be exact. So one of them is a morph. And so probably for many, the least exciting card that's in there I happen to think the Morph is a pretty good card. It's one where you, you know what the outcome of the encounter essentially will be. You're going to have a deal situation if the other player revealed a negotiate. Um, or you're going to have an attack card of the same value. Um, so you can look at the ship differential there and you know if playing the Morph is going gonna, is gonna to be good for you or bad for you. Notwithstanding the possibility of other game effects like reinforcements or what have you. So Morph still pretty powerful card. One more in there, and of course, it does increase the likelihood of a morph versus morph where both sides lose. So that's the uh, that's the outcome of that. I like having the morph. It was just not going to be possible for me to put one in there. Um, we do have one negotiate card in the Ultra Reward deck, and it's called Extreme Demand. So 
If it's opposed by an attack card, you lose, but you collect double compensation. So if you're losing four ships and, and because you negotiated and the other player played an attack card, normally you get four cards from that player's hand in compensation. But here, in this example, you would get eight because it's double. If the extreme demands is opposed by a negotiate, players have one minute to make a deal or each loses three ships to the warp. That's normal but you choose which ships your opponent loses. So that is a pretty extreme demand there. Uh, gives you maybe a little more leverage to get something good out of a deal. Uh, since you're with three ships, there's a good chance you're gonna be stripping them of at least one foreign colony, maybe more than one. Uh, then we have two special attack cards. So we have this one with uh, a number on it, the attack 20, sneak attack. And then this is an O, not a zero. It is O for overkill. So let's talk. Let's take about uh, talk about the sneak attack first. So it's a twenty. If it's opposed by an attack, the higher total ships and card wins. That's normal. If you win playing this card as the offense by four or more, you may also land one or more of your attacking ships on another planet in the same system. So that means that if you've come in with say four ships and you win by four or more, let's say you win by 10, um, you can divert two of those ships to another planet and get two colonies. So the sneak attack, a way for you to get two colonies, could be a way for you to leap into the win of the game. We only had three colonies. Maybe a bunch of people have helped you out. And then you're like, yeah, I'm going to be playing this ultra reward. And then it's, uh-oh, this could be trouble for the other players. And then we have O for overkill. And what is overkill? Uh, oh, I should I should mention that um, if it's opposed by negotiate, you win, but the opponent collects compensation. So nothing nothing unusual there. Uh, overkill. So if the overkill is opposed by a morph, both sides lose, and that's important because if the overkill is opposed by anything else, doesn't matter if it's an attack card, a negotiate, what have you, you win, but your opponent collects compensation. So that means that if you reveal the overkill. As long as the other player didn't reveal a morph, you're going to win that encounter, and that player is going to get compensation as if they had negotiated uh, because you went overboard, and it was almost like they were surrendering, and you killed them anyway. So the overkill, that's the downside of it, but it's basically an I win this encounter effect and um, with, with the, only a very small chance of it not happening. Um, so it's important to note the overkill does not have a numerical value. So if you have an effect like uh, the winner alien, uh, the uh, the winner can get an additional foreign colony if they win by, I think it's 10 or more. Um, overkill doesn't have a numerical value. So the 10 or more would not apply in that circumstance. So important to note. All right, then we get down to the last five cards, the non-encounter cards. So we do have a... Reinforcement, plus nine. So the highest reinforcement in the game, plus nine, certainly going to help you to win an encounter, I think. So that's good to know. Um, we do have a kicker. So the kicker, the way the kicker works is it's a, it's a reward card that you announce that you're playing when you are playing your encounter card, or actually it's right before you play the encounter card. So this is a kicker from the reward deck. So you can see it's a times two. It's going to be a multiplier. It's going to multiply the value of the kicker with the value of your encounter card. So if you played an attack 10, this this makes it an attack 20. And you would reveal both of these at the same time. And you're announcing the kicker. So the other player knows that you're playing a kicker. They may want to reconsider what they're going to play. They may You may be like, oh, I don't know. I, they probably can't beat whatever it is they're going to be playing. Um, so, you know, there are kicker twos, there's a kicker three, there's a kicker zero. Um, that one is kind of a bluff for most players. Um, but the kicker that we have in Odyssey's Ultra Reward deck is a times X. So you play the face down before cards are selected. That's normal. It multiplies your encounter card value, amount, compensation, and or number of sh opponent's ships lost to a failed deal. That's also normal with kickers. So if you reveal it with a negotiate um, you're going to multiply your compensation, uh, but if it's a deal situation, you will multiply the number of ships your opponent will lose if the deal fails. So all that's normal. What is the X, though? The kicker's multiplier value is equal to the number of ships you have in the encounter. So 
Again, you'll have some agency over this. You say, all right, I'm, I know I have the kicker times X, so I'm going to bring four ships because that makes it a kicker times four. Very handy. Oh, you know, let's say that you're Amoeba. Well, now Amoeba, suddenly, pretty good power because you you uh, ooze in, say, 10 ships, and now it's times 10. That's going to be an encounter you probably will win. Um, all right, then we get down to the last three cards. So we do have two artifacts, and they are new artifacts to this edition. Uh, let's start with the one that has been in previous editions, and that is Time Gash. So Time Gash, this is the first time the Fantasy Flight Edition will have Time Gash in it. It's an artifact. It inserts an extra encounter. So you play it at the start of any encounter or in the regroup phase. Choose any player, and that player becomes the offense and has one and only one encounter. So normally you're going to choose yourself. Like, I'm going to have an extra encounter. But there may be circumstances where you do want to pick somebody else. Let's say that, you know, the cult is in the game and you are a member of the cult. And some other member of the of the cult has a really good hand. You can sort of say, all right, let's have them do the next encounter. Or maybe we in the cult can win the game. Or just somebody that, like if you're the bride and you're married with somebody and you know that you can ally with them, um, there's definitely going to be reasons why you might not pick yourself. But usually you'll say, yes, I'm going to have the extra encounter. Uh, and then after the encounter is over, play resumes with the previous offense. So um, it's just always been a nice artifact. Uh, it's good to finally have it in the game. And then we have the crazy one. This one is called Aperture. So the way this one works is it adds aliens to this universe. So we play during any regroup phase. If the double alien variant is being used, then everyone draws two reward cards. So that's all it does if you already have two aliens in the game. But most of the time, you will not. So... Otherwise, add the double aliens variant, which is on page 18 of your campaign guide, which it handily says there. And then each player draws a flare from the unused flare deck into their hand and gains the corresponding alien sheet. If the alien has game setup text, it's not allowed. Uh, remove that alien's flare and draw again. So you're going to be getting another alien and you will be having its super flare. So I've had players ask me, well, why would you play this? Because it's really it's going to benefit everyone. Well, there's a couple of reasons why. And I'll tell you why I would play it. Um, is one is just because um, I like the added noise. <laughs> let's let's all get extra aliens and that and to have their supers and let's just see what happens. But for me, I think it's more commonly going to be used. It's kind of a hail mary. If you're in a situation where like ah oh, things are not going well, and it may be because of the mix of aliens. Like my alien is clearly at a disadvantage, or I'm falling behind. I need a desperate gambit here. So let's do double aliens, and maybe I'll get an alien that can really help me get back into things. So it may be a desperate gamble. Uh, I've definitely seen it pay off. So uh, I, I think it's a good addition in there. And then finally, our last one is the booby trap, and it's the Rift 9. So most of your Rifts are in the 3, 4, 5 range. And the way the Rift typically works is you can play a Rift uh, during a regroup to free that many ships from the warp. So if you're playing a Rift 4, you're freeing four ships Again, it's any ship, so it doesn't have to be your own, but usually it is going to be your own. Um, but if it's taken from you by another player, it basically explodes and destroys that many of that player's ships, sending them to the warp. So if you take a Rift 4 from me, you would lose four of your ships, and you would have to discard the Rift as well. So the Rift 9 works similarly. Play at the start of any encounter, free up to 9 of any player ships that are in the warp, captured, or removed from the game. So the Rift 9 uh, affects more than just ships in the warp. These ships are returned to any colonies of their owner's choice. If another player takes this card from you, they lose nine ships of their choice to the warp and then discard this card. So it's a nine-ship booby trap. And back in the playtesting, the Rift 9 uh, also made you lose nine cards from your hand. But I think Frank at Fantasy Flight felt like that was... That was too much. He should have seen the original one. It was actually a Rift Infinity. You lost all of your ships <laughs> to the warp. Um, and so, yeah, that was that was maybe too too cruel. But I did want it to be a nerve-wracking experience for players to think about taking somebody's ultra reward card from their hand as compensation. There's shiny red cards. They're begging to be stolen away before they can be used against you. Um, but... Again, even just losing nine of your ships, that's pretty bad. It's almost half of your ships for, for most players. So 
that is the Ultra Reward deck. It's just these nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep, eight, nine. I, I, I actually have some <laughs> custom ones separately. I'll show those in another video sometime. Um, so yeah, so you have the, the Rift Nine in a deck of nine and the plus nine from the reinforcement. I liked how that kind of all tied together. Um, so let me know what you think of the reward deck. Um, not that it's just the reward deck, but sure, let me know about that. But Ultra Rewards in particular. Have you been using them yet? What do you think about these? Um, the restrictions about getting them, uh, is that good enough of a balance to keep people from getting, you know, so many all at once? Um, and, you know, if you've come up with your own custom Ultra Rewards, which I know some of you have, um, please share those because we, we all like to hear about that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye.